I'm Katie Stern, and I want to introduce you. This is Anna Smith. She goes by Asa Marie. Is that correct? Correct. Do, yes. you, do you have a story behind that that you can share with us? Or I, I do. It's a funny one for older people. Younger people may not know what I'm talking about. But, but um, when I, so my name is Anna Marie, and my last name is Smith. So Anna Smith, Anna Marie Smith. And any combination of that, there's a thousand of us out there. So um, when AOL Instant Messenger first came out, my boyfriend in high school went to college and I was still in high school. And so my AOL name, I didn't want a bunch of numbers behind it. And so I just turned the end sideways. Oh, very good. Yeah. And then turns out, and I'm half Italian and there's a couple of different, like I went to Italy one time and there's a few different brands that had like as a, as part of their name. So that was kind of cool to oh, see. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. So. so it fit and you didn't even realize it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yep. All right. Well, Anna has, has agreed to help us out by letting us use her designs as, um, not experiments, but just showing you how to set up files to go to the printer and I can finally release some of the information about the printer today. We are printing onto Swedish dishcloths using a process called direct to film. Not many printers do this and the issue has been in the past that it's been very expensive for those of us who want to sell our products to get one or two of these designs printed onto a Swedish dishcloth and then be able to post them or print them up uh, for selling on Etsy or going to a vendor fair or something like that. So I've developed a way of doing that. And I really wanted to share it with as many artists as I could. There's no reason for me to own this. I am an artist. I will be selling my own works, but there's no reason why I can't share this with the world. So that's my goal. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> So, so far, if you're a member of my newsletter uh, club, then you've been able to get the instructions on how to set up your files. You can sign up for the newsletter. I'm happy to share it with anyone. This is not a private group at all. It's just a group that I can share the information with fastest way possible. So feel free to sign up for the newsletter. Okay, um, Anna, let's take a look sure. and see what we've got. I'm gonna share my screen. And I'm going to go to you, one of your designs. There we go. So can you tell us about this design? Yes, I can. I uh, had some surgery. And so I was laying on the couch for a few weeks <laughs> and watching the Olympics, actually, back in February of 22. Oh, wow. Um, so this was during uh, the, most of the time I watched figure skating and uh, ice hockey. So anyway, but at the same time, I have, uh, I had a bunch of plants and stuff all over my bookcase that my TV was on. So it was me staring at the, those things and then coming up with a couple of different designs. Uh, and this was the strongest one of the three that I've done. Sweet. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> it's really nice. Thank you. So one of the things that I notice about this is that, um, there are no gradations in it. It's, it's pretty much solid color which means that if she wanted to, if Anna Marie wanted to, she could actually get this screen printed, which is one option. If you can find a screen printer who will do something out of Swedish dishcloth for you, that is a possibility. But mm. any, any idea of how many colors you have in this, Anna? Oh, let's say six, maybe. Okay. So if greens. you have a screen printer doing six colors. Yeah, that's a lot. Five that's or lot. six. It's yeah. pretty expensive. So one of the benefits of going direct to film is that they can do basically anything in the CMYK color spectrum. And it comes out just as a photographic quality. So you could have gradations of you know dozens or thousands of colors in your design and get it printed in this way, which is kind of an unusual deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so setting up the file, in my in my specifications, and I do have some printing guidelines set up that you can that you can get. There's again again there's no charge for it. Um, it just helps you to know how to set up a file for this particular printer and this particular medium. Okay, going onto Swedish dishcloths, and this file size that we've got set up is six inches by seven point two five inches. 
And I know that there's going to be a white border around here because the actual cloth is a little bit bigger than that. But the reason that I set it up at 6.7, or sorry, 6 by 7.25 is that the printer is going to take care of the border for us. We don't need to worry about that part. So the wiser way, instead of setting it up to a bigger size, is to go ahead and crop it right down to the 6 by 7.25 or to start your file immediately at 6 inches by 7.25 inches. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, now you can do it either vertically or, and it has it horizontally or landscape. So either portrait or landscape, you can design it either way, but Anna has been correct in turning her sideways. So it's in landscape format. That's the format we need to send it to press. So that's excellent. So all I'm going to do for you and just you know doing one quick thing to help yeah. out here, is to go ahead and crop out these blank spaces. Okay. How would you do that? Just curious wise, because now I'm talking to a really <laughs> great graphic designer. She's she didn't she wasn't born yesterday. Okay. She oh. is she's definitely <laughs> very adept at these. So I'm just curious, how would you yeah. do this? Well, okay, that is a good question because I was having sort of issues myself when I was trying to figure out exactly what you said like should I have that border there and crop it or not right um and honestly I haven't worked in Photoshop in a long time because so, okay. I normally work in Illustrator mm -hmm. so I was actually having issues too so either cropping the canvas size mm -hmm. and then also I was getting confused with cropping the canvas versus cropping the image okay so if you can explain that because I know you have more background in that stuff than I do maybe okay so yeah. what I what I did, let's put it this way, okay? Mm -hmm. What I did, and, and there's probably other people, and hopefully somebody else will pop up and say, I have an easier way of doing yes. this. If you do, please let us know <laughs> because we can all learn from each other. Yeah. Okay, so I sized this. If you take a look at the upper left-hand corner, mm -hmm. I sized, I went to the crop tool. <clears throat> I came to the ratio and I'll change this to 7.25 horizontally and then six inches vertically. Now I should be able to do that by just hitting this double arrow for some mm -hmm. silly reason. Photoshop decided not to do that today. So, oh, okay. so I went ahead and filled it in. So now I can grab these little corners and I can maybe do this a little bit easier by holding my option key while I do it. Mm -hmm. Holding my option key makes it come from all different directions toward the center. Can you see that? Nice. Yeah. So Alt right. or option key, pull it down, and then mine snapped. Nice. So I'm, you know, then I can release my option key, and basically I'm done. Now I do see on the far left side here, do you see just a few little tiny pixels that look like they're, they yes. haven't been cleared up? Yeah. I'm not sure why that happens, but I know that that's an, illustr an Illustrator issue. When we ah. take a file, bring it from Illustrator to Photoshop, we run into this a lot. Okay. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny little strip. It's like a third of a pixel or something. Mm. Okay. And okay. that's why the crop tool can't figure out what to do. Gotcha. Because it's empty in your situation, I don't need to worry about it. Okay. It's going to print fine. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. So I'm going to hit the return key. And now if I needed to, I don't need to on yours, but mm -hmm. if I needed to, I have something that will allow me and I can just click and drag <clears throat> and shift mm -hmm. this back and forth. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to do a command Z or control Z. Okay. So now I just hit it once more. And I've actually cropped it. And I actually see these lines right yeah. along the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if somebody is working with a white background and they need to do this, don't worry about it because the white isn't going to print as white. It won't print as white unless you tell the printer, print this with white ink. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the white cloth underneath is going to take care of that. Makes sense. Okay. Yep. If you're worried about it, if you want to change it at all, I could do a command or control A to select all. 
I could do a command or control T. Okay, that's to transform. I could come up here. I'm doing a command or control delete or uh -huh. backspace. And it should be bringing me up and it's not. So Photoshop isn't very happy today. I'll go ahead and zoom in with my zoom tool. Now there's my marching ants. So I can see mm. that little line of pixels that tends to bug me wow. on the end. Yeah. Okay, come on. Now I'm having to do it the opposite direction and it doesn't want to. Isn't it fun? So now <laughs> what I have to do, do you notice that there's there's no little plus sign in the magnifying glass? Yes. So it's giving me a fit Please. today, which is just highly <laughs> unusual, but I am zoomed in as far as Photoshop will go, which is really fun, except I don't want to be here. So the <laughs> fastest way back out is to double click on the hand tool. Okay. If I double click on the hand tool, it'll come back. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. So let's try one other method. I'm going to zoom in by clicking and dragging across this space. Mm. And now I'm better off. Okay. When I let go, it stops zooming. Yeah. Now, if I hold down my space bar key and wait a second, I'll get that hand tool and I can move up. There we go. Nice. Now I'm where I want to be. So I've got my marching ants. I'm going to do command T, which means edit and transform. I'm going to click and drag. Now we're in Photoshop, so I want it to maintain its proportions. Okay, with the mm -hmm. height proportions. And Photoshop has changed its methods from one version to another. The latest version says, do not hold anything down if you want to maintain your proportions. Just click and drag a little bit. Okay. There we go. Oh. And now I can hit my return key. Now, now I'm done. Nice. Okay. Okay. So I could come back and look over here. I can always visualize. I really don't think the same issue is on the other side. It's typically on two sides only and not the other one. Mm, okay. I don't understand it. <laughs> okay, I'll tell huh. you. And there are lots of reasons. I'm sure you can Google it and find out you know, a lot more about it. So then I'm <laughs> going to do Command or Control D to deselect. And then I'm fine. Perfect. Double check at this stage, image, image size. You want to make sure that we've got the proper size. And it is just over 6 by 7.25, and that's fine. Okay. I noticed that you saved it at 300 pixels per inch. Thank you. That's great. Yep. Anything from 250 to 300 pixels per inch is fine. Okay. And then the other thing that I'm going to check is whether or not you did this in RGB or CMYK. Okay. I can look in two different places. I'm looking at the name of it up here. And yep. we've got this layer 11 CMYK-8. Okay, slash eight. So that tells me, whoops, excuse me, mm -hmm. I'm flying here. So that tells me that it is properly uh, sized. Are you, are you seeing my Photoshop in the background? I am. Okay. Yeah. I'm just having all kinds of fun on Zoom today. Let's see <laughs> if I can click and drag it up. Open there it up. You go. There Maybe. we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, if that says RGB, you need to change your file to CMYK instead. So I'm going to check it in one other way. I'm going to come up to image and mode and RGB color is the wrong one. CMYK color is the right one. Okay. okay. These are the colors that are printer can print. Got it. If you need to change yours from RGB to CMYK, do not do this image mode and switch it to RGB. That's that's the worst way possible of doing this. Your colors are, can go really wacky if you do it that mm -hmm. way. I get a lot of complaints about that from my students. I don't know about you when they do it. Far better yeah. to come up to, in, to edit. And this is on a Mac, but I think the PC is the same. 
edit, come down to convert to profile. This is where you want to be. We're going to accept whatever Photoshop offers us as our destination space. So this is our uh, profile is working RGB. Uh, no, that's not, okay, we're going backwards now. Let me get into an RGB file. Okay. I'm gonna open one of mine real quickly. So it says RGB and it'll be easier to follow. So right now I need to, come here, mm -hmm. there we go. Um, I need to go ahead and change this. So right now it says image and it says mode and it says RGB color. Mm. So I need to come over to edit, convert to profile, and now I'll see the proper things. Yeah, currently mm. it's sRGB. Come down, this is gonna come to working CMYK and we'll click okay. So that's like an automatic, if you're in RGB and you do that convert to profile, it'll mm -hmm. automatically give you the op, like it'll give you CMYK or reverse? Yes. Okay. That's correct. Right. Okay. Perfect. And again, when I talk about doing the default, for those of people who are much more advanced, you can come and you'll find out that there are all sorts of different profiles that you can assign, or you can change your color settings and it gets really, 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 really crazy. Mm -hmm with all the different types of CMYKs that are available. Gotcha. Yep, so we're not even gonna worry about that. The only thing that we can use at this stage is that US web coded, it's already there for you. It's as easy as pie. Nice. Okay. The one thing that I'll recommend is that once you've done that, save your file with a different name. So I would come <laughs> in and do a file save as, and I would build into my name something about CMYK and then place it wherever I want. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save this as a Photoshop PDF document. This is what we need. Okay. So Photoshop, if you click, if you just click on save as, it's going to be down here about half to two thirds of the way down. It's not just Photoshop, it's Photoshop PDF. Okay, save that. Okay. And then don't worry about any of this as long as it's high quality print. Mm -hmm. You're fine here, just click on save PDF and we say yes. Okay. All right, so any questions about that, Anna, or thoughts about what to share with other people? No, I think that... You explained everything really well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's come up. I'm going to come to Zoom again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And I'm going to come and share a different screen instead. And I'm going to take you to Google Chrome just for a second. Mm-hmm. And now you can see where I've been and all sorts of things that I've done. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to come to iPop Prints and Designs is the name of the printer that will do this work for us. Okay. So iPop Print and Prints and Designs. And this is a group down in Texas that prints in all sorts of different ways. Mm. One of the things they do is DTF, which is direct to film. We need to do just a couple of things. We come to the shop button. By the way, you can you know, go ahead and take a look. They, they got some spectacular artistry there that they print out for people. They print shirts and all sorts of stuff. I'll come to shop and just a couple of lines down, there is a line specifically for us, for mm. those of us who want to do Swedish dishcloths. Nice. And here are some examples of what he's done. This is one of my designs that he's done. So. I'm going to click on Swedish cloth DTF prints. When I put in an order, I got all confused and, and had to do it again. And the reason is that the first thing you have to do is choose your file. Okay. That's the very first thing. Don't put in your quantity first. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I got through all 15 and then I had to start. Oh, over. no. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't oh, matter. okay. No big deal. <clears throat> so you choose your file. 
And I'll just grab maybe my Loon family. Mm -hmm. It uploads. Once it has uploaded, then you choose your quantity. Hmm. And then you add it to the cart. Okay. And you go through and pay from there. You you put in your your um, name and address and all that information. Okay. Great. But that's the one thing I really needed to have people understand is you've <laughs> got to choose that file first. That's good to know. Yeah. And then he'll go ahead and print them for you and you get your you get your Swedish dishcloths. That's, that's it. Exciting. That's easy. That's yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping for us. All right. So I'll stop the share then. Okay. So do you have any questions for me? Do you are you do you have any concerns before we dive in and actually do this? I don't have any concerns. I think I know that you did mention on your sheet about the do's and don'ts um, yeah. to not do a design that's full bleed. And obviously yours that we just it is out his example was full bleed and it has that little bit of the border. Right. Um, right. So, so I my, probably won't be doing my full bleeds that I had. Oh, that's you know, right. like I'll just wait and redesign some things specifically for the limitations that we have to work within. You can do that. Here's another option. So, okay. so just to explain what happened for Anna is that she had done some that went all the way out and included all that border space. So the 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 cloth would be completely covered and not the six by seven point five or seven point two five that's in the middle. So the question is what to do with that. And you have a couple of options. You could go in and crop it yourself. I didn't want to make that visual decision because it's your design, not mine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you could just go in and crop it and make okay. it six by seven point two five. If it was made in Illustrator. You yeah. could go in and change your design and, you know, make whatever modifications and then export it again. Okay. Um, you could do either yeah. one of those. I think, honestly, though, that one file, and I used to do this too in Photoshop, I would just save like that template and then upload each design on top of that template or that background or whatever. In this case, there was no background. Right. So I think I did do that. I did shrink them down, but now I'll go back and adjust what you just did in the video as we okay. demonstrated on how to like actually just submit the six by 7.25 is that right yes yeah okay yeah. now you I'll still may have you things. still may have a little bit of change in your width and height uh, yeah. proportion because the the evenness of the border is not going to be exact it's yeah. not an yeah. exact you know version all the way around gotcha. but i think you'll you'll be able to handle this no problem okay sounds good Okay. Anything yeah. else that you can think of that we can help people with in getting started? I don't, well, maybe you know this because you've done a few already. Because okay. um, I have recently been designing in Procreate more than on Illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's any tips and tricks for trying to get that a little less pixelated when you export or before you export it, I've, si I've seen some videos on uh, Instagram, but I haven't really paid attention to, you know, those little like reels and things. So you're seeing a lot of pixelation once you get it out of Procreate and bring it into something else yeah, Photoshop or whatever. Photoshop okay. or Illustrator. Um, yeah, I, I can give you some hints. Okay. So one thing that I do in Procreate is start with as large a file as I possibly can. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing. Now, be, depending on your iPad and depending on the version of, of Procreate mm. that you have, you might only be able to have X number of layers. Yeah. There are ways of working so that those layers can be collapsed and then you start a new, you know. Yes. So let me say that right. You yep. duplicate your file on the yes. duplicated version, you flatten the them. layers yes, flatten and then them. you keep working. Yeah. And, and definitely that's how that I do one, that. Keep going. Okay. Yep. So the, yep. I've used that trick Same. thousands of times. Okay. Then... I would bring it into Illustrator. And, and so you okay. have to, let me put it this way, you, you need to save it out. I would save it and share it as a .psd file. Mm -hmm. I would bring it in at that approximate size into Photoshop. I'm sorry, into Illustrator. Illustrator. Okay. Yep. 
So it's a file in place, okay? It's not a file and open in Illustrator. You start an Illustrator file, you place it into that Illustrator file. Yep. Okay, so far so I good. I tell my students that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> file yeah. place, yes. File place, yep. Yes. Then don't stretch it out a long way to go across your Illustrator document. Keep okay. Keep it small. Okay. And the reason is I'm going to go ahead and um, do a, an image trace from that. Oh, got you. Okay. If I do an image trace while it's still fairly small, it uh -huh. seems to be more accurate. Okay. Than if I stretched it all the way out and it looked all pixelated and I tried to do an image trace from that. That makes sense. Okay. So if I keep it small, I do my image trace. I go for every single color I can possibly get out of that image trace. Yeah. I say high quality photo. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That's good. Yeah. And I, I should, I should, there are, there are a number of reasons why you would do this. In other words, there's a lot of reasons why you would bring it into Illustrator and, and do this work. One of them that I can think of is um, pattern design. So surface pattern design, where you're going to want to replicate things, but you only have seven colors to work with for the fabric. Mm -hmm. You don't want thousands of colors, okay? You, it's going to be a nightmare if you do that. <clears throat> so if that's the case, choose the closest version of you can get. You can get three colors. You can do six colors. You can do 16 colors. Mm -hmm. Do the closest version of that. Got and it. then Illustrator is going to tweak all those in between colors for you mm -hmm. and, and get you down to a smaller number. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good news. Thank you. <laughs> good tips. I have found that to be very helpful. Yeah. Okay. You may not do everything, but it's very helpful. And then once you want to get it bigger, it's already vectorized. Right. That's the whole point, because then you've got your smooth lines. You yeah. Sure There's still smooth lines. Okay. That is helpful. Because, yeah, that's the one thing I have not tried until you decided to do these Swedish dish cloths. And I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> but, um, well, that's we're pushing yeah. into new territory. Yes, we are. There's going to be a lot to learn. There's a lot of um, things to think about as we do this. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Anything else that you can think about? I think that that's everything. Okay. Well, yeah. Anna, thank you so much for your time and your expertise and for your artwork and letting us work on this. Sure. I think we're ready to open up the doors and let people do this. Uh, the printer is ready. He has the Swedish dish cloths. The only thing you have to do is prepare your files, make sure that they're properly prepared and get onto iPop photo and or iPop prints and designs. I keep on saying mm -hmm. it wrong. <laughs> iPop prints and designs, submit your files and he's set to go. So good luck to everybody. I really hope this opens some doors for people. Very exciting. Thank yeah. you, Kate. All right. Thank you. We'll talk mm -hmm. to you later. Bye.